Okay, so my name is Scott. And of course, uh, for those who've met me before, uh, I work with the Multicultural Association, uh, for those who haven't. Um, and today is our first session of um, our group sessions, which is meant for uh, coaching clients, everybody essentially who's here on the basics of how to, how to find employment, in, uh, especially in, in New Brunswick, okay? Um, but more specifically for, for Canada. So this will take a look at um, what it's like to try to find work in Canada and the little tips and tricks to help you along the way, all right? And so the very first session, of course, is creating a competitive resume. I think that one of the most important things you can do uh, as a newcomer is to have a really uh, outstanding resume. So I'm going to share a bit of my knowledge and some tips on how to do so. So before we start any further, um, I just wanted to mention that everything you see here and you hear from me is uh, a mixture of personal opinion, uh, personal experience as an employment coach, some online research and information gathered from career development fairs okay, or conferences. Um, the reason I'm mentioning this is because resumes are not, there's not one way to do them. Okay, So everything I'm saying here, you might not agree with. And that's perfectly fine. That's what's great about resumes is that they're unique. Everyone has a different one. Uh, and so if you think that something is different, that's totally fine. These are just my opinions, okay? But um, I just want to let you know that, you know, being an employment coach and having done some research, this is what I can offer you as, you know, good suggestions. Uh, but don't feel free to need to copy everything I do. So um, I have a couple questions here, and uh, I'm just going to try to... Uh, see if uh, maybe we can answer them in chat or even just um, turn on your camera, give me like a thumbs up, thumbs down or whatever. Um, but I'll just ask openly uh, and maybe you can answer in the chat or uh, turn on your mics or whatever. But the first question is, what is the average time an employer spends reviewing a resume? So what do you think, how much time do you think an employer spends actually looking at your resume? So 30 seconds, one minute, six seconds or 12 seconds. Um, and so please feel free to give me your answer. What do you guys think it is? And a couple in the chat, 30 seconds. Think, uh, 30 seconds. Uh, they use them uh, an automated tool, it will be big, big second. Yeah, Six. okay. Yeah, um, so 12 uh, seconds, 30 seconds is what I'm seeing in the chats as well. So um, the answer is shocking, but it's actually six seconds on average. Now, what on average means is some people spend, you know, many minutes, but some people don't even spend one second. So on average, there's very, very little time that's spent looking at resumes. So what does that tell you? Well, what it tells me is that resumes are really focused at the beginning, right? You need to really win over the employer at the beginning, or you're going to have a tough time and not be able to sell yourself as a candidate. Because if someone's only looking for uh, at your resume for six seconds, there's not much information that they can gather from you, right? All right, next question. Your resume should only be one page in length. What do you think? True, false? And again, you can just write it in the chat or just answer openly. True. All right, this was a very mean one because it's actually, it depends. <laughs> Um, so, um, it depends. So yes, um, if, if you can, you try to put your resume into one page again, going to the six seconds, employers don't spend much time looking at your resume anyway. So why spend more time and room and space with more pages, uh, and more information. So, um, however, the, it depends piece is important to mention because if you have 20, 30, 40 years of work experience, it's really, really hard to condense that into one page. And so it's okay. It's okay to have more than one page, uh, especially if you are running out of room. However, the absolute limit is two pages, okay? So uh, for a, a more specific question and answer, two pages is your limit. Never would, should you have any more than, th than two pages, three pages too much, four pages too much. One page is ideal. Two pages is okay if you have extra stuff that you need to mention, okay? So it depends. It's, it's not necessary. One is the goal. Two is okay. All right, next question. 
you must include your work history, your, sorry, you must include your entire work history when writing a resume. What do we think the answer is here? Again, you must include your entire work history. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I like that. I like that answer, Patricia. <laughs> so it, it it could be it depends. Yeah. Sorry, according what did you say, Mustafa? Job. According to the job you are applying for. Yeah, well, that's, that's a great answer. Yeah, so the answer in this case is false. You should not have to include all of your work history. Again, you're you're not wrong, Patricia, because let's say you have only one job in your experience, you might want to mention that one job, right? But for most of us, it's not true. You should only be including the work history that is specific to the job you're applying for, okay? So let's say that I am an administrative assistant, okay? I've had two jobs where I am an administrative assistant, and I've had one job as um, a cashier at um, a fast food restaurant. If I'm applying again for an administrative position, I might only want to include that I've only done administrative work, all right? Especially if the work at the fast food restaurant as a cashier was very little time, okay? So just as, as an example, only make sure you're talking or including things that are relevant to the job you're applying for, okay? All right, next is you must provide a detailed list of your duties for each job position. I'll get to your question in a second, Ahmad. Um, I just want to get through this one. So you must provide a detailed list of your duties for each job position. A duty is essentially the list of work you do every day. What do you think the answer is here? Depends, false, false, okay. Yeah, the answer is false. Um, again, if, if you're going to include jobs that are not relevant, uh, you can certainly save space by not having to write each of your duties for that job, right? Let's say you do include the fact that you were a cashier at a fast food restaurant, but are an administrative assistant. You might not need to add any duties. You could just say that that's what you were. And if the employer wants to explore that with you more, they can ask you the question at an interview, for example. It's all about saving space, right? So if you're looking at one page and the six seconds that an employer is going to spend with you, try to limit the amount of information you put there. So only provide detailed job duties for the ones that are really relevant to the job. Okay. Uh, Ahmad, you had a question? Yes. Uh, regarding uh, not mentioning the work experience, uh, which is not related to the job, Sometimes the employers asking about the gaps in between the, yes. the, the, the experiences. So this, this might be another issue or another yeah. concern that if I'm uh, having too many, uh, uh, like no work in between the jobs. Yeah, that's, that's a really good, great question. Thank you for asking that. So it goes back to this point uh, exactly. So when you're right, the, the question was, um, you know, what it, there, there could be an issue with people, especially employers, looking at job, job gaps, so gaps in your history. So let's say I'm an administrative assistant, I've had two different jobs, and I decide to not include the fact that I was a cashier at a fast food restaurant. They'll, they'll look and say, well, we're, what were you doing during those months or those years, right? And they'll question, you know, why were you not working? Were you, you know, they'll, they'll start doubting you as a potential candidate. So that's why it's, it's, it can be important to include that, but not have to include any of the duties that you did to try to limit space because it's not important. But at least you are mentioning that you did work during those months and years. Okay. So what I, what I would do personally is I would categorize my resume to show my most relevant job experience and also include the fact that I have other non-relevant work experience, but not, not spend too much time on explaining what I was doing there because it's not really important to the job I'm, I'm applying for. So good question. I hope that answered your, your, your question. Um, it's about saving space and you can have a mixture of, of both of those. So if, if you're worried about there being history gaps, so time gaps, you can include it, but don't spend too much time on, on trying to explain exactly what you're doing if, you were, if it was not relevant, all right? Okay, great question, thank you. Um, so the one after that uh, is, you should not use color in your resume. It's distracting and unprofessional. What do we think? You should not use color in your resume. It is distracting and unprofessional. Hmm. 
<laughs> depends. Yeah. True. True. Okay. All right. So this, this here, I would consider false. And again, this is my opinion and I'll tell you why you'll see, you'll see very shortly why to me, um, my background is in marketing. Um, it's what I studied at UNB. It's what I studied in business college. Um, and I can tell you that what catches people's eyes is color, right? If you ever look at an advertisement, a billboard, rarely are they black and white. Um, and so you should use color, but very, very tactfully. Uh, and so use it, but don't overuse it, all right? So you wanna highlight the points that are very important to highlight because that's where the, the eye naturally attracts to, right? So if you bold your name, for example, and you color your name, that is a part that is going to attract the name and it could actually, sorry, it could attract the eye and it could actually help you be remembered as a candidate. So if you do that throughout and you highlight your job, your jobs that you've had, the experiences that you've had, you highlight those pieces, it can actually really, really help you. So I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've asked this question and done this presentation many, many times. Um, most people say true, that you should not use color. And that is something that I think that they learn prior to arriving to Canada, uh, where the expectation doesn't change. The, I would say that I would change your, your thoughts on this. You don't have to do it, of course, but I would change your outlook on using color. I would use it, but in, in, a, in a productive way, all right? And I'll show you exactly um, what that means. Uh, and I have a question. What do you think about template with color? I think templates are, are useful. Um, templates are, can, can be really, really good sometimes. They can be also pretty bad. You just need to pick the right one. Um, and... It's something that we can certainly go through together at some point. If you want that to see, I can show you what, what is a really good template and what's a really bad template. Um, but yes, I, I think that using templates that have some color is good. But remember that if it's too much color, you can always change the font and the coloring yourself so that you can eliminate some of the too much color piece. All right. All right. Last question. Adding your LinkedIn account to your resume, if you have one, is important. Right. What do we think about this? Yeah, this, this one's pretty much a gimme. So if you have a LinkedIn account, it's important to, to link it, of course. It would have it in the contact section near your phone number. Your uh, That's very important to have there, certainly uh, included if you have it. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, that is okay. Uh, but I would suggest as an employment coach that you try to work on one because it is an online profile. And I think it's something like 60% of employers who, who are bringing a candidate to the interview portion will verify your LinkedIn and your Facebook prior to even inviting you. So it's a high likelihood. So if you have something that you wanna add, something that you've missed, uh, of course, keep it professional, but I would give them a, a link to go access some other information about you. All right, so we're done with the questions. So now we're gonna go uh, through, all right? So let's run through a resume step-by-step. -step. Um, and a great way to learn any concept is to do so. So I'm going to break it down into different steps. At the end, what we're breaking down is essentially a resume that looks like this. Okay, um, this is just an example. It's not the best. It's not perfect. There are some, some edits that can be made for sure. But in summary, this is what a, a resume typically looks like. And this is what we're going to break down. Okay, so I'm just going to skip this here. So job ad customization and tailoring, that's step number one. The most important step is job ad customization and tailoring. So what does that mean? So here's an example of a job ad, okay? Um, here we have a job ad for a Fredericton administrative support, right? So it's just an administration position, essentially, clerical or clinical cleric, um, anything to do with, with um, documenting, um, processing, documents, uh, maintaining documents, databases, these kinds of things. It's just a regular administrative position. So this one is for the Horizon Health Network in Fredericton. So it'd be working on behalf of the Horizon Health Network, uh, which, which takes control of, of most of our health facilities in the province. Uh, this is a job, found, job uh, ad that I found about a year and a half ago, perhaps. And it says very clearly in these boxes, demonstrated proficiency verified by testing. So you will need to be able to type 35 words per minute, have a good medical terminology um, in spelling and your vocabulary, 
a uh, good Excel, Outlook, and Word. So Microsoft Office, uh, you, you'll need to have a good ability to use that. Um, and data entry, entry. So these are the main things they're looking for, all right? And when it says 75%, it's just a way of saying that you need to be above average uh, at understanding these things. 100% would be perfectly um, you fluent in, in Excel. This is saying you need to be above average. So a good amount, you need to understand these things. The next thing it says at the bottom is key responsibilities, right? So you need to be able to process referrals and other medical documents. You need to transcribe and proofread and edit reports, create, edit, and format documents, maintain a database, and so on, all right? So the key here is to look at this job ad and say, they're telling me exactly what I need to, to show them I, I'm capable of doing, right? The last thing you want to do is lie about your abilities, all right? So don't say that you can do these things if you can't. However, they are telling you exactly what they're looking for. And so if you do have these skills, you need to mention them. It's the most important thing. They're telling you exactly what the perfect candidate looks like. If you can share any of these skills, you definitely should. So this is how you create a resume. You start by looking at the job ad you want to apply for, all right? And then you say, okay, how can I tailor or customize my resume to fit exactly their needs. That brings us to the second page. Okay, so now we look at the top of resume. You have the, the name, the contact information, uh, email, LinkedIn profile if you have one, and you take a look at the objective, the skills, all right? When creating a resume, you wanna make sure that these areas right here talk about what you just learned in the previous page, all right? It needs to be almost identical, not to the point where it is identical. I don't want you to copy paste and just put it there. They'll know. <laughs> but if you have some relation, you should absolutely include it. All right. So let's take a look here at the skills. Uh, being proficient with Microsoft Office and Access. Okay. Well, that was something that they said was very important here. If you take a look at where my mouse is, Excel, Outlook, and Word. Well, now I've gone and I've, I've mentioned that in my, uh, in my skills section. All right. Five plus years of experience maintaining databases and customer files. Well, as an administrative assistant, I have worked five years in total now. Um, I have five years of experience doing that. If you look here, that's exactly what they were saying is important, right? So maintaining databases and producing reports. This might seem like really, really a simple concept, but you'd be surprised at how many people don't do this. They don't look at this and they don't make the match. They just put down what their experiences are and hope that they'll ex be accepted on the other side. But by doing this, you heavily increase your chances of, of, of at least getting a, a, an interview. Oh, and, and this brings me to my last point. So I, I we'll move on after this, but um, let's, let's take a look at this one here. Typing 65 words per minute, right? Um, if you remember on this slide, it says you need to type 35 words per minute. The, the great thing about doing it this way is that not only are you saying that you can write 35 words per minute, but you are selling yourself as somebody who can do even more, right? And that's important. Anywhere that you can up the amount of what they're looking for, take advantage. You know you can write 65 words per minute, tell them because they're going to be impressed by that. If they're asking for five years of, of experience maintaining databases and customer files, but you have 10 years of doing so, mention that. Mention all the things that you can do better than what they're expecting. That is a, a straight giveaway for somebody who's going to be a good candidate. Most of the time, you'll at least get a res, uh, a, uh, an interview. Sorry. All right. So this is really important. Things to note, just little tips that are going to really help you. Okay. So. That's step one. You look at the job ad and you say, I'm going to customize a resume. All right. Now we're going to go uh, onwards with that. So the professional summary and the objective is the first section that you should take care of. All right. Um, just I'm going to go back to this page, but just so you can see in this little green area here, that's where the objective or the professional summary typically is. It's the very first thing below your name and contact information. All right. The objective or professional summary is a strategic message meant to catch the reader's eye, all right? So you should be able to sell them in that first paragraph. Remember, six seconds isn't a long time. It should perfectly summarize who you are and suggest to the reader that the rest of the resume touches in more detail on what you're trying to sell them on there, all right? Keep it short. Definitely keep it short. Don't, don't be making multiple paragraphs or making it any longer than a few lines. 
uh, because that's what the cover letter is for. And that's what our next session is about, by the way. All right. So it's a punchline, very quick. Um, so let's take a look at this one. This one here, with an educational background in business administration and customer service, I hope to bring many years of experience and a passion for seamless workflow to your organization. I am an energetic, dedicated, and efficient individual who wishes to share their talents. Now you can see my, my little giveaway on the left here. It's too broad, but I wanna ask you guys openly, what do you think is wrong with this um, objective? What is, the, what is wrong with the way I wrote it? What could be improved? If you tell me it's too broad, I will agree <laughs> because it's written right there. Um, no answers, that's okay, that's all right. Um, it is too broad and yeah, yeah, Patricia, go ahead. Maybe we need more information about the skill, work skill, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, in my objective here, my professional summary, I don't really mention any specifics. It's very, it's too open. Um, you don't really, I don't even give you how many years I've worked in that, in that area, right? So um, you need to be more specific, of course, in your skills, yeah. Okay, uh, I have a question. What's the difference the objective and the profile? Is so it the same means? It's the same, not? yeah. It's just, it's some, some people call it goals. Some people call it objectives. Some people call it professional summary. You can, you can use any of those words up here, okay? It, it means the same thing. A lot of people use professional summary. Some people use objective. Um, in the case of objective, you might want to phrase it in a way where that is your goal. My goal is to work for your organization or my goal is to do this or my goal is to do that. Where a professional summary is a bit more of a summary of your professional abilities, but all of them are interchangeable, if that makes sense. Okay, and the profile as well? Um, what do you mean by profile? It's like so, the profile about yourself, the your professional. Your yeah, professor. your professional summary. So I would say it's the same yeah. thing as a profile. Yeah, that's how I would say it. There, there. It's that's where at the top here is where all those things belong. Just a summary of who you are or what your objective is within the company. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. So uh, moving on. That's this section here. So. Let's take a look at how we could fix this, all right? So instead of this, let's try this. Organized and dedicated administrative assistant with six years of professional experience, attentive when handling records, files, and data, will bring superior performance in office support and customer service. This one's a lot better because you're offering examples, all right? You're telling very clearly based off of the job ad that you are attentive and very careful when handling records, files, and data. You have six years of professional experience doing so. Instead of just saying you have many years and that you are going to bring you know, passion to the workplace. It's not really what the person is looking for. If you can put in examples, specifics, that's even better, all right? All right. Okay, on to the next one. So um, now we're moving on to the third section, or sorry, the second section, but the third step, skills. So we've just finished the professional summary or objective or goal section. Now we're moving on to the skills. Um, just a quick note, these things don't have to be in this order, okay? You can put them where you want. I'm just suggesting that this might be the best way you can sell somebody on what your skills are, all right? Because you put the short stuff at the top, to try to sell the rest of the resume, all right, where, where you're holding a lot more information. If you put something like skills at the end, then somebody who's spending six seconds on your resume has to go through your education and your, your professional experience before you, they get to see what your real skills are. So that's just my recommendation. Um, okay, so skills section, uh, you want to have about five to 10 bullet points. So here you have eight, that's perfectly fine. Anything above 10 is too much, all right, it's too much reading. Um, the skills will, will be a section where you're going to talk about the things that you have a lot of proficiency with, the things that you are really good with, all right? Here you gave a summary of who you really are in this section, but here's where you can really nail down what your skills are, all right? So as I, as I was saying in that job ad, it's important to make sure that the skills and the job ad match in terms of what they need for job duties, all right? So here we have 
proficient with Microsoft Office, five years of experience maintaining databases, um, firm believer in going the extra mile. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this around because there are some things that can change here. Um, highly skilled in drafting, proofreading and editing reports, all of that, okay? Those, these are, are, some of them are pretty good examples of what you would wanna put, especially because they match the job ad that you've seen. Now let's go to the next part here. So remember this, this is the job ad. I'm trying to find a way to bring those needs from the company back into my resume. So these are two that, that are not great, all right? And I just wanna ask the question, why, why, what could change about them or what is wrong about them? So me saying I'm a firm believer in going the extra mile or I'm an efficient multitasker, what is missing there? What's wrong with that? Yeah, exactly. No examples. There's no specifics. I'm just saying that I'm doing this, but I'm not really offering you any specifics on how I'm able to do that. Okay. So you take a look at firm believer and going the extra mile and you say, well, how can I present that? How can I show that? All right. Well, you could say instead, it's just, it's this one right here. You aid staff immediately after completing duties. Okay. So that shows somebody that when you're done your own work, instead of just sitting around or leaving or going home or whatever, you help others in completing their tasks. So that's going the extra mile. That is literally going the extra mile. You're doing more work than you have to. But now I've given an example, right? So the, the, the employer themselves can decide, well, is that what I want on my team? Yeah, sure. Now they have an example and it's usually a lot better than just saying, I'm gonna go the extra mile because they don't have anything to go off of, all right? Same with efficient multitasker. Able to manage multiple programs at once. Well, that's an example, all right? Able to manage multiple programs or projects at once is a physical example of you being a multitasker, all right? So it's just about rewording it and giving examples. So the, the employer reading this is saying, okay, so I can give this guy or this girl a job and I can probably also give them something else to do because they can handle it, all right? All right, now we talk very, just a little bit about soft skills and technical skills, okay? So soft skills are typically things that are innate. They're natural to you, all right? It's not something that you had to go to school to study or college to study or take exams or that's more the technical side, all right? So if you're good at something physically, that's typically a technical skill. If you're good at something innately, perhaps your, your, um, your personality, that is more of a soft skill, all right? So let's go over these. All right, I'm just going to ask you guys really quickly, which of these are soft skills and technical skills? I think a lot of us are pretty well versed in this. Um, so let's just see. So proficient with Microsoft Office and Access. Is that a soft skill or a technical skill? Technical skills. Okay. And everybody else can, you guys can write in the chat if you'd like. Technical, yeah. Okay. So yes, perfect. It's a technical skill. All right. What about five years of experience maintaining databases and customer files? Okay. So the answer in this case is again, technical. All right. Um, what about great time management and task priority? Yeah, exactly. That's a soft skill. And the last one, typing 65 words per minute, what do we think that is? Technical, right? So um, yeah, you can see the difference there. Uh, it's important to know the difference because what I want to say next is you have to have a mixture, all right? You can't have all technical skills or all soft skills in your skills section. You should have a mixture, one of each. In, in this case, you know, I have one, two, one of the other, um, to three to one to technical right now. I think overall I have about five or six, uh, five technical and three soft, right, in this one. So have a mixture, have a healthy mixture of both. Uh, and just to show technical here, and these were the soft ones, all right? So have a good mixture of, of both of them. Okay. Um, so next is professional work experience. So now we get to the really meaty part of the resume where you have to spend a lot of, of time trying to perfect this, all right? 
so that's this section below objectives or professional summary below your skills should be professional experience and professional experience is very simple it's just all of your work history the one the ones that matter of course the ones that are relevant to the job ad uh, or the job that you're applying for so here i'll show you exactly the breakdown this is what a i would say a very good summary of your professional experience should look like all right so Absolutely necessary is to have your um, your job title. So the job title that uh, that you had prior. All right. So in this case, data entry specialist. Next, you have to have your employer. All right. So the company you work for. After that, this one is you can include it. It's, it's optional. Is the location. My suggestion to you is if you are coming from a, a foreign country, which would be most of us here. Um, it's important to include the location, okay? The reason being, a lot of Canadians are um, are not aware of the companies from your home countries, all right? And if you just put no location at all, they'll assume that you did your work here in Canada, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's also not honest. It's an, it's it's important to share with them that you are from a different country, that you have worked from a different location, all right? So. It's optional, it's not necessary, but my recommendation is to put it, okay? Especially the country, all right? So let's say you're from uh, Paris, France. You might want to put, you know, data entry specialist, wildlings technology from Paris, France, so that they know that, you're in, that you work there internationally. Next, the dates. So the dates that you work, the dates that you started until the day that you ended, all right? That's your, your work term, um, and it's very important that you include that. I'll keep this section here last. Uh, we'll go to the bullet points. So these are the, the bullet points of the job duties that you had, all right? So the limit, by the way, is five, no more than five, all right? Five is a good amount, especially for the job ad that you are trying to explain more in depth, okay? So what that means is that if it's your most recent or your most relevant job, make sure that you put as much information there as possible. When you start getting less relevant, let's go back to that cashier at the at the fast food store. I might not include any job duties at all. I might just say that I work there or I can include one, right? The most important ones will have the most bullets. The least important ones will have the least amount of bullets, but no more than five, okay? Again, keep never forget that first point where on average employers spend about six seconds looking at a resume, right? They're not gonna get much time to spend looking at all your bullet points. As much as, as much detail as you want to share, they might not get to it. So save yourself. The other thing to remember is that people, in terms of psychology, they remember immediacy and recency. All right. And what that means is that typically the things they remember are the very first thing they read and the very last thing they read. Okay. So everything in the middle, if you put too many things in the middle, they won't remember it anyways. So make sure that you put your important ones at the top and at the end. Everything in the middle can kind of, kind of be a filler, all right? So there's a pro tip from me to you. It's very true. This is very much research. People don't spend much time focusing on the stuff in the middle. It's like a sandwich, essentially. In the middle, whatever, you, you have the two red slices, top and the bottom. That's typically what's remembered in this case. All right? Then we go to this little section here. And this is your write-up, all right? Or a little summary of the type of, of organization or job you did. This can be very, very important especially for those who have foreign uh, experience, all right? There's not very many people in Canada that know to, to a great extent the companies that would be in Paris, France. So it might be a good idea to include, almost in, in, in italics here, a quick summary of the organization so they can understand. You know, you say, um, I mean, everybody knows McDonald's, but if you were to work for a, a, um, a different um fast food restaurant with a different name, let's say, I don't know, let's say it's say that the name of the restaurant is called Wildlings, you put that down, a Canadian employer would probably not know that that's a fast food restaurant in Paris, right? So including the fact that you, you know, Wildlings Technologies is a multinational data storage firm that specializes in data security and cloud-based data deliverables. That gives the employer, the reader, a summary of where you, you had worked and the type of, of company you're working for. So again, uh, optional, but I do recommend that you do something like this, especially if it's foreign work. If you're working in Canada and you are applying for another job in Canada, I wouldn't worry so much about this. Uh, Canadian culture typically 
we understand uh, different companies from within our own country. So again, job title, important company name, location worked, work summary, dates worked, and tasks and description. So you can see there's a lot of information here, but it's all well compiled and organized in a way that it's not taking up too much room. All right. So that's the point. Don't don't waste too much room. Try to uh, minimize it and summarize it really, really well and efficiently. OK, next is education. All right. And this should typically be the last section, uh, although you can add others afterwards. But this is the last section for this purpose. So point number one. Try to only include completions from colleges, universities, or technical schools. High school education is not absolutely necessary, especially if you have training in the other directions, right? So what you don't want to do is you don't want to say you have a PhD, but then also mention that you have a high school diploma. That's all. That's, it's already insinuated. They know that. Uh, in most countries, you can't just get a PhD without having completed high school or some form of secondary, right? So um, not necessary to include that. Again, sp saving space. Point number two, it is not necessary to include all education. It's far more powerful to include relevant education only. So I've seen many times people who apply, they've, they've, they have two master's um, degrees and, and a bachelor degree in a certain area. Um, I would say that it's, it's, it's really not important to mention the fact that you have a bachelor's when you have a master's. Try to limit it. You, it's, it's understood that you're going to have a bachelor's degree if you have a master's degree. And again, just keep it simple, short, and only mention the things that are relevant. Let's say you have um, two bachelor's degree and one master's degree. The bachelor's degree, one is in administration, the other one is in, I don't know, psychology. Maybe don't include the one in psychology. It has no relevance to the administration job that you're applying for, right? It might not be worthwhile talking about. You can include it. It's not, it's not the end of the world, but I'm saying if you're looking to save space in certain areas, these kinds of tips will save you space. Um, point number three, include the name of the school, the name of the program, the degree, the year you completed and the location. So very much like the job ad, sorry, very much like the work experience that you have, you want to include the name of the school, the name of the company, the name of the program, the degree, or your role, the year you completed, so how long you spent there, and then, of course, the location. It's very similar. I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Point number four, feel free to include your GPA or your rank amongst your classmates, all right? So in Canada, in North America, and I'm sure many other countries, there's a grade point average or a grade point system. If you're very high on that grade point system, don't be afraid to, um, to you know, pump your own tires. And what I mean by that is to boast your, your, your successes, you know, to, to, to be proud to share that stuff because that ultimately makes a big difference. Um, if you have a high grade point average that you're proud of sharing, make sure you include it. In places like Great Britain, um, theirs is a bit different. They typically rank their students uh, upon percentage. So finish top 5% of, of the students. You can say that, you know, you finished in the top 1% of all the students in the program. That's another way you can mention it. Point number five, you can mention specific school projects that are relevant to the job posting, but to keep the explanation short when you're doing so. I'll give you an example. On my personal resume, when I was in university, I was doing my, um, I was working on on my a master's program, and there was this um, this class project that was essentially the entire class. And what I did is I created a marketing initiative for an American company to try to come and sell into Canada. Now that took me almost an entire semester to create. There was a lot of work that I got into that. And it was very related and relatable to my degree and what I was looking for in terms of work, marketing, right? So I included that. I said that in my, in my studies, I created this project with the title, all right, of the work that I had done. Um, so that's just an example. It, it took about six months of my time. It's, it's still a lot of work and it might be worth mentioning. This can be, for those who are PhD students in here, I understand that you have a, a graduate resume, which is much more, you know, you have your published articles. It's a lot different than a regular resume. Um, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. It could be worth mentioning if it has relation to the job you're applying for, okay? So Patricia, I'm looking at you. I know that the resumes are very much different for those lines of work, especially if you're looking to, to you know, apply for some research grants or try to work with a university. Completely different, I get it. Um, but uh, just keep that in mind, all right? Um, yeah, you had a question, go ahead. 
Okay, so you suggest that put a uh, when I do my education, my resume, and I put information about my accomplishments. That, yeah, yeah, yeah you you can, it, but I want to make sure that you understand that it's only if it's relevant. Um, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So if it's not, then I wouldn't bother. But for me, like my example is, I I I I created a, a marketing integration plan for a company, which is something people get hired to do full time on uh, jobs, right? And I had done that for school. So it was worthwhile mentioning when I was applying for marketing jobs because they could see that I had experience creating content and doing that type of job. So yes, in some cases, it's important to mention. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, um, so this is what typically, uh, these, are, uh, these are three different examples, by the way, not just one but this would be an, an education section in your resume, right? So you have education. Then, like I said, you have the name of the program, all right? So what you studied. So in this case, computer information systems, um, and then the, the country or the location, or, all right? Sorry, not the, um, the school. So in this case, Near East University, and then you have the dates that you studied or completed, and then the location, all right? So commute, computer information system studies, was the, 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 the focus of the studies here at the Near U, uh, East University between 2015 and 2019 in North Cyprus. Now you can see here in this case, I've added the GPA, uh, 3.5 GPA, which is worth noting. The second example is just regular, no GPA. And then the third one is where you're adding a couple more things, you know, the things that you're proud of. Um, so yeah, it, it's just a different way of formatting, but as long as you have the basics here, um, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so in the end, your resume should feel like this one. It shouldn't necessarily look like it, but it should have a lot of the similar properties, okay? You're starting off with your contact information, your, your LinkedIn profile, if you have one, a professional summary of some sorts. I would argue that this is even just a bit too long, but it, you know, four lines is not the end of the world. Your skills or your expertise, your job experience, and then your education. Now, this is about a page, right? Um, it doesn't go any over that. And I'm sure that whoever created this, you know, facilitated in a way that they're leaving a lot of information out to allow them to have one page of content. Um, so by no means is this, is this the perfect resume, but it is clean. It's, it's edited nicely. It's formatted well. Um, that's all very important. Um, if this person wanted to add more, they could certainly have an extend into a second page. Um, other things that you can add to a resume, accomplishments, um, and you can also add volunteering experience. You can add different sections. So let's say your job for somewhere like, like MCAF, volunteering and being community oriented is very important. So knowing that you could add that you have a volunteering experience and list all your, your voluntary uh, work, right? And that would be a really good section to add to your resume. So where I have experience here, I could have another section that says volunteer experience, and I would write it in very much the same way I wrote this experience here. All right. So that's, that's essentially it uh, for, for today. I'm trying to keep up with, uh, with the timings. Um, so, so thank you for listening to me. And now I'm, I'm certainly going to open the floor to, um, to any of your questions. Um, so yeah, please feel free to ask, ask away. Um, and, and even just give me your, your suggestions of what you might do differently uh, based off of what you've heard today and, and my opinions. Um, you know, it, it's, it's open. You can certainly share whatever you'd like. All good. Um, all right, I will, I will continue just talking. If you come up with a question, ask me or just send it in the chat. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we are going to be doing a lot of these sessions in the coming weeks, more things like this. Um, I'm hoping that this has been useful to you guys um, and that you learned something. I'm sure a lot of it has been repeat information if you understand, but even the little tips and tricks and the things that make a big difference um, are, you know, are typically the small things. So um, we, in, in order for you to really follow what we're doing, I have to say that we are really, really active on our Facebook uh, you know, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just saying that we post job ads from everywhere, constantly tips, um, information about our, our uh, organized sessions, our group sessions, everything is there. Uh, as you can see below, I have it written exactly like that. So if you'd like to join up there, you'll be able to follow everything that we're going to be doing in the coming weeks and months. 
Um, so yeah. Um, if I could give one overall piece of information about how to work with resumes, um, it would be to make sure, um, of course, that you are always customizing. Um, and I, I don't mean to, to, to be insulting when I say this at all. Um, many, many clients, um, they'll, they'll use one resume and they'll send it out to, this, to, to you know, 100 different employers. And then they'll wonder why they're not getting a call back. And that's it's exactly because of that. You, you, you have to customize it. You have to customize resumes to make sure that your, your, your application is the exact same or very, very related to uh, the job ad and the job that you're applying for. Uh, too many times have I seen, you know, uh, clients send me a resume so that I can apply on their behalf for a job that we're, that we're uh, circulating. And it's the same one that I would have seen for the previous jobs. And that is just showing that there's not much effort being put into making sure that they get a chance at, um, at that application. So always, always customize it. I know that it's frustrating and it's a lot of work, uh, but here's, here's a final tip for you all. Finding a job is almost an, a job in itself, all right? So if you treat it like that, if you set time aside on a daily basis, like you would a full-time job or a part-time job, you will find success. Um, you know, if, if you're looking for work, set aside three, four hours a, a day, if you can, you know, and, and make a routine out of it. Get up in the morning, get yourself ready, um, you know, get your kids ready, do whatever you need to do, and then commit, sit down and say, I'm going to be doing this uh, for this next three, four hours, which you would do at a normal job anyways, right? And that way you will find success, I promise you. And it's about committing and really making sure that you're putting your effort into this. It can be difficult, but just stick with it. I, I promise that good things come if you put the effort. Um, Patricia, to your, to, your, to your message, certainly send me a message uh, privately. If you'd like me, I can, I can, I think you might have my, um, my contact information, right? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, I have a question. So which position I need to change my resume for about this description? Yes. Can you say that again? Uh, when I have, for example, one position open, mm -hmm. I, I need to change my resume according to the description. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so what I mean by that is I'm not asking people to do a completely new resume. There's a lot of things that stay the same. Your experiences are the same. It's, you know, you, you can't just make them up. Um, but make sure that you're editing little bits and pieces to customize it to the job ad in front of you, all right? Not on a whole new resume every time. It can stay mostly the same. But if you see something, here, I'll bring you back to, um, to this section here. Um, if you see something on this one, right, that, that you know you can, you can really promote yourself uh, for, do that. Because this job ad will be different than the next one you look at. And so it's always about finding the things, the sweet spots in here where you're like, okay, oh, I can really do that. I'm really good at that. I'm going to put that in this resume. And maybe the next person is not looking for that, right? So you remove it and you replace it with something else. Um, so not a whole new resume, but definitely try to change pieces and bits uh, to accommodate the job ad. Okay. All right. Well, um, uh, thank you everybody for, for participating. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, hopefully you, you, you all learned something. Like I said, this session will be recorded, so I will be uploading it to our YouTube page, which you can have access to, of course. Um, and you can watch at any time. There'll be, you know, uh, timestamps throughout. You can go to wherever you want in the, in the presentation. Um, and so, yeah, our next session is, of course, tomorrow. Uh, it is at 2 p.m. again, and we're going over cover letters. So if you have the time, by, by all means, go ahead. I'm going to be talking about how to create and format a cover letter. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully I'll see you all there if you have the time. And if not, then I'll, I'll see you again down the road. All right. So thank you again, everybody. And uh, I appreciate everybody coming and sitting with me today. You all take care. See you.